A 64-year-old female presents with the chief complaint of progressive worsening of abdominal pain, unintentional weight loss, and steatorrhea. Her surgical history included hernia repair, Roux-en-Y gastric bypass for weight loss, and later on a Whipple reconstruction for double duct sign and concern for malignancy. Post-surgical pathology later revealed non-malignant etiology, which showed pancreatic intraepithelial neoplasia. MRI was performed, which showed persistent tortuous and dilated remnant main pancreatic duct, measuring up to 7 mm without evidence of obstructing mass, but there was a cutoff sign at the expected area of the surgical anastomosis site. The MRI finding, in addition to the clinical picture, was highly suspicious for pancreatic or gastric anastomotic stricture. Therefore, the decision was made to create an EUS-guided gastrogenostomy using lumen-opposing metal stent to access the pancreatic gastric anastomotic site via the remnant stomach. EUS was performed across the GJ site, and under EUS and fluoroscopic guidance, a 19-gauge needle was used to puncture the remnant stomach, which was followed by the advancement of a 20 mm lumen-opposing metal stent over a 0.025-inch guide wire from the rule lump into the distal gastric remnant, thus creating a de novo gastrogenostomy. Two plastic stents were placed into the gastric remnant through the lamps ending in the rule lump to ensure adequate drainage and protect the lamps from rubbing against the jejunal and the gastric walls. A technical failure was initially encountered during the attempt of the creation of a gastrogastrostomy, which was unsuccessful as the contrast readily drained from the remnant stomach across the remnant's gastrogenostomy site. Therefore, the pouch puncture site was closed with an over-the-scope clip. Three weeks later, the patient returned for the first attempt to cannulate the pancreatic gastric anastomosis site. The previously placed lamp was traversed into the distal part of the excluded stomach. The plastic stents were noted to have migrated. Two sutures were noted in the stomach with the location correlating with the proposed pancreatic gastric anastomosis site. The opening was not clearly visualized and was thought to be significantly stenosed. The sutures were cut using endoscopic scissors and partially removed. Multiple attempts to cannulate the pancreatic gastric anastomosis site using a 0.025 inch guide wire and sphincterotome were not successful. The procedure was aborted. Following the failure to cannulate the pancreatic gastric anastomosis site in a retrograde fashion, the patient was offered either surgical revision, which was not preferred due to the history of multiple abdominal surgeries, or an EUS-guided drainage approach, which was preferred by the patient as well. Four weeks later, the patient returned for an EUS-guided rendezvous drainage of the pancreatic duct. Under EUS and Doppler guidance, the pancreatic duct was injected with a 19-gauge FNA needle through a transgastric approach. The pancreatic duct was injected with contrast and the pancreatogram was obtained under fluoroscopy. This revealed a dilated and ectatic pancreatic duct. Contrast was injected and was not seen extravasating or draining into the excluded stomach. An ultra-stiff, long, angle-tip guide wire was passed anterograde through the needle and coiled in the pancreatic duct. All attempts to pass the guide wire anterograde across the pancreatic gastric anastomotic site were unsuccessful. Therefore, the guide wire was redirected towards the tail of the pancreas, where a safety loop was formed to avoid losing the access to the pancreatic duct, and decision was made to create an EUS-guided de novo pancreatic gastrostomy. Next, a 6 mm by 4 cm balloon dilator was passed over the guide wire, and dilation was performed by inflating the balloon to 8 atmospheres. Then, a 5 French by 9 cm plastic pancreatic duct stent was placed in the pancreatic duct over the guide wire. The upstream end rested in the duct and the contrast was seen draining through the stent. The patient was admitted for an overnight monitoring and no post-procedural adverse event occurred. Clinical outcomes. Patient did report gradual improvement in her abdominal pain, decreased steatorrhea, and weight gain. The patient returned five weeks later for a follow-up procedure. A guide wire was used to cannulate alongside the previously placed plastic stent and a pancreatogram was performed. The de novo created pancreatic gastrostomy site was further dilated by performing balloon dilation to 6 mm and a 2 7 French plastic pancreatic duct stent were placed in a side-by-side -side fashion to ensure adequate drainage 
and promote patency of the fistula site. The patient returned three months later for a second follow-up. The previously placed lambs was seen just as still to the GJ anastomosis in the ruled limb and was traversed with careful maneuvering into the excluded stomach. Two stents were seen exiting the excluded stomach wall. First, one of the two seven French stents were removed through the gastroscope with a snare. Then a short 0.035 guide wire was passed into the pancreatic duct alongside the indwelling seven French stent. The last stent was then removed with a snare and the pancreatic duct was cannulated. On pancreatogram, the duct appeared to be decompressed and straighter compared to prior, and to maintain the patency of the de novo created pancreatical gastrostomy, a 9 mm balloon was used to sweep the duct, and a small amount of white particulate matter was removed. A two new upsized 7 French and 8.5 French pancreatic duct plastic stents were placed. And to prevent further tissue and growth into the stent, the lambs was removed with the rat tooth and replaced with a new 20 by 10 millimeter stent. Pancreatico enteric anastomotic structure is a rare late post surgical complication that can present as chronic abdominal pain, recurrent pancreatitis, and ultimately pancreatic insufficiency. The literature on the best management approach is scarce, particularly when it comes to pancreatico gastrostomy and anastomotic structures. Endoscopic interventions are challenging in patients, particularly those with complex surgically altered anatomy. Clinically, our patient continued to gain weight and reported decreased diarrhea and steatorrhea and had an additional three procedures, four months apart, after her first follow-up procedure post the initial EOS guided drainage of the pancreatic duct. During these procedures, the two pancreatic duct plastic stents were replaced to maintain the patency of the de novo created pancreatic gastrostomy as well as the periodic, twice-yearly replacement of the lumen opposing metal stand to limit tissue and growth and or mucosal erosion. Although the de novo created pancreatic gastrostomy resulted in pancreatic duct decompression, it is anticipated that the cannulation of the surgical pancreatic gastrostomy will be re-attempted, whether in an anterograde or retrograde fashion, to establish a more durable drainage of the pancreatic duct. We presented a case of challenging pancreaticogastric anastomotic structure that was managed endoscopically by creating a de novo EUS-guided pancreaticogastrostomy. The EUS-guided transluminal deployment of LAMPS could allow the access to the anastomosis site in patients with surgically altered anatomy and allow a wider range of therapeutic tools. Early treatment could reverse the clinical consequences of pancreatic endocrine insufficiency and prevent chronic pancreatitis.